All right. It took a couple of days, but I'm finally back to make another video. What show are we talking about? Uh, oh, God. Oh, no, no, no. <sighs> Looks like it's about that time. Hey, what is going on, everybody? My name is Payne, and welcome to another anime review video. And, oh, boy. <laughs> this one is going to be fun. For anyone who has no idea what this show is, you are in for a treat. Because it was only a matter of time before I was going to review shows like this. Shows uh, where people actually compare it to... Dare I say it? Hentai. One of the things that, one of the rules I limit myself to is that I don't want to watch hentai or anything like that, but shows that are really close to it, uh, somehow they just slip through the cracks for me. But. I know that if I'm going to keep reviewing shows like this, uh, it, it's bound to happen. Well, here goes nothing. For this review, here is Kiss Exis. Oh, God. Kiss Exis was directed by Muinori Kawa, was written by Katsumi Hasegawa, and was made by the studio Feel. It aired in the spring of 2010 and consisted of 12 episodes. It started off as a manga that produced 19 volumes since 2005, and the studio feel uh, actually started airing OVAs from 2008 to 2015 that were packaged with the release of the next volume of the manga uh, before they made the actual series. Then, then they continued making some after the series was over. Before you ever say that I am a perv for watching this show, or any dirty insult you can think of. In my defense, I found this show from a friend. There was a friend uh, that I knew that also watches a lot of anime, and he kept talking about how he found out what this show was and said it was his new favorite. And being the very gullible idiot that I am, I thought, you know what? You know, I, I, I watch a lot of pretty good shows. I don't see a reason why I shouldn't watch this one. And boy, did I find a reason not to watch this one. But with that out of the way, uh, let's get into the actual plot of the story before we get to the plots of the story. So the story follows a kid by the name of Kida, and the story is that he is trying to apply into the high school that his two older stepsisters, Akko and Riko, are in. And fortunately, in the end, he is able to go in it. Unfortunately, that is not the entire story. The main story that everyone seems to remember was that at an early age, Kida's mom died and his father married a woman who had two twin sisters named Akko and Riko. Now, when it comes to stepchildren, it's pretty tough right off the bat to get used to someone new coming into your life. I don't know why, I don't know how, but they just got used to being with each other a lot right from the very beginning. It starts off with them just kissing Kita's cheek and just some, you know, pretty thoughtful stuff that two older sisters would do to probably like a six or seven year old kid. Nothing that bad. But when it gets up to high school, and the only reason that I can think of this is probably because, like, I don't know, they're sexually curious, their mindset turns from, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna cherish this kid, because this kid keeps getting bullied by everyone, this kid doesn't have that much friends, we're gonna help him out through life, to, I wanna have sex with this kid. It, it, I swear to God, they don't explain why they do this. They just jump the gun and they just, just go straight doing this in the first place. And throughout the entire series, Akko and Rico will be uh, just hanging out with Kita a lot and will be doing things that, I'm not gonna lie, are very similar to hentai, if not one of the biggest teases to hentai ever. And the supporting characters in this instance, some help, some don't. So first there is Miharu, someone who, throughout the series, it's a little blurry, someone who may or may not be interested in Kida. She is also the victim of a running gag in the show where she can't control her bladder, and this is where I gotta draw the line here. Now, I looked this up, but there is an actual condition where people can't control their bladder. Uh, sometimes very irritating for some people, frustrating in some cases, and it is annoying for everyone around them because they are being controlled by this disease. Basically what they're doing is making a running gag out of a serious condition, and uh, I just I, I just gotta say no to that. That's just not right at all. There is Yuzuki, who is a teacher at the school, who for a while was my shining ray of hope and morality in this show because she was the first person outside of the main characters to say, hey, this isn't right. That the fact that siblings are possibly going out with each other is not right at all. 
She finds this out like midway through the series and it actually breaks my heart knowing that she had a chance to say something or do something and she did it. It just, just let it happen. To make this show watchable, it just doesn't do anything. <laughs> and to make things more uncomfortable, you have uh, Mikazuki, who is Yuzuki's little sister, and basically all she's there for is to be someone who's in love with Kida. She is someone who, she is a year younger than him, and that's all she's there for. She's there basically to have a crush on Kida, making this show into a harem, as well as a show that's basically a shit ton of teasers to a hentai. But the one thing that really pisses me off is the parents uh, in this whole situation, the dad and the mom. We're introduced to them in around the first episode after, I think, the first major incident between Akko, Rico, and Kida, which I'm not even going to get into because I want to keep this video up. And his argument would anger any logical person. Oh, don't worry if your two stepsisters are in love with you, Kida. Lighten up. You're not blood related, therefore you can marry one of them. The mother doesn't say shit. She just supports him in this. This is... No. No, no. Parents of the fucking year. Yeah, no, you're just... You're gonna let your siblings fuck each other, are you? Wait. Oh. I'm gonna put that pillow back. Alright, let's try something. Close enough. There was one time in the show that actually made me laugh. And it had nothing to do with the main characters. Thank God. And it's regarding Yuzuki, the teacher. As it's revealed through the series that she's obsessed with samurais for some reason, in addition to being obsessed with anime and manga. There would be times towards the end of the series where she would ask for help. Uh, and she would always ask help from, like, her idol, which is some ancient samurai from the 8th century BC. I don't know, I'm just naming off a time frame. And... After she would ask for help, there would be this floating samurai head right in the middle of the room that would give her advice. Either, you know, do this, or in one occasion, I can't help you, <laughs> which I thought was pretty funny. But it easily wasn't the funniest part, as the funniest part was that every time she did this, it was always in a room full of people, so she was freaking people out just by acting erratically, asking for a dead samurai's help. But the fact that every time the samurai would show up, everyone around him would, like, react like something is up in the air and I would think it's hilarious because I always thought it was inside her head. Uh, in, in my opinion, that is the one part that made me laugh. I, ever, everything else just made me uncomfortable and disturbed. Not surprisingly, the animation and music for the show doesn't stray away from industry standard as uh, for music, you have your uh, usual cliche music, you have your opening and ending, which I'm gonna get to later, especially towards the ending, and your mix of erotic music, because what show doesn't have their amazing mix of erotic music? It's, it, it definitely just sets the mood perfectly, like, perfect. But the ending especially, and I've said this before with Lucky Star, uh, basically they're another passenger on the Hari Hari Yukai bandwagon in which they try to make a very catchy dance that anyone can do. And for a short while, they did. There are actual videos out there of people doing the dance, uh, the ending dance, in public. What really bugs me about uh, the videos of people doing the dance was that for them to do the dance, they would have to watch the show, which is already bad enough as it is, and I don't want to go into the mindset of the people doing this dance uh, as to why they're watching this show in the first place, because I just know that is a headache waiting to happen. Kiss Exist is the perfect show for that one kid who's very sexually curious, especially in middle school, but can't watch porn because of parental controls on his computer. And the reason why I say this is because, I said this earlier, the show is filled with teases. Hell, with the amount of foreplay it has, it's basically the closest thing that kid will ever see to porn. In my honest opinion, as much as they are cliche and predictable, the characters came off as alright, uh, overall. If you take away the main aspect, the characters are alright. Uh, Kida seemed like the reasonable reputation of most average guys his age, and of course I think the twins were a bit over the top just to try and get to him, because they are apparently girls who are sexually curious, and they want to get after a guy, and 
to do that, they have to go over the top. I don't know. That That's just me. That's what I took from the show. But if you look past that in actuality towards the story of Kida trying to get into the high school, they're just trying to help him out. And there are even a couple of times where Akko and Rico trying to get kinky with Kida sometimes combines with Kida trying to get into the high school. They were sometimes trying to help him with that. Um, for obvious reasons, I can't say what they did or I can't say how they did it because I, again, I want this video up. I want to make review videos and I want to be out of the way with this show. And from there, to, just so I can get that out of the way, I'm going to give this show a 3 out of 10. Uh, lowest score, I feel like that's the, uh, that's the perfect rating for it. And if it wasn't for the characters and the side story in this instance of Kida going to the other high school, I seriously think it would have been a 0 out of 10. Like, it, it would have just been god-awful. Overall, I highly suggest you stay away from this show, uh, unless you're into that kind of stuff. Uh, and for that, I say... I, I can't really make fun of people who are into that stuff. I, I can't. I, I just don't want any shit coming after me for it. Uh, so that for that, I say just go for it. I, I, I really don't care. Uh, all I know is that I don't really care for it. And that is where I'm going to be for this show. Uh, wow, I'm happy I'm done with this. Thank you guys for watching my Kiss Sex this review. Um, yeah, you can see I'm not entirely excited that I reviewed this show, but hey, I got out of the way. I'm done. If you like this video, click the like button down below. If you want to see more anime review videos, you can hit the subscribe button either on the screen or under the video below. And if you want to see any, any more anime review videos that I've made in the past, uh, you can go on to my channel, which is down below, or any videos on the screen. And for that, uh, my name is Payne, and we'll see you in the next anime review video.